Okay, so we are continuing our uh, relook at DCH codes. Uh, DCH codes, I mean, we'll see DCH codes. We'll have a relook at DCH codes. We've been looking at cyclic codes, so so we're going to go to what DCH codes from the cyclic codes and okay. So what we saw so far is that a binary cyclic code is an ideal n, ideal of Rn, which is the ring of polynomials modulo x bar n plus 1. And then we saw that every ideal is in fact generated by some g of x, where g of x divides x bar n plus 1. Okay. And then we saw that x bar n plus 1 factors into linear factors in over some large enough power m x, right? Find the element of order n, and uh, so remember we have to find fix, we always fix n to be odd. Okay, when we look at binary cyclic codes, n will be odd, so this will be true. Okay, f two power m x, and uh, so that means g of x also has uh, can be can be factored. I mean, it's a divisor of x power n plus one. So if, if if you factor it over f two power m x, it will also factor into linear factors. Okay, the same property holds for g of x also. Okay. So instead of thinking of g of x as a binary polynomial, you can also define it by providing all the zeros of g of x in f2 power m. Okay. So those are called the zeros of a cyclic code. Okay. So the equivalent idea of zeros okay, are called zeros of code. Okay, and then uh, we saw that there is this all this uh, this a nice relationship between the zeros of a code and the zeros of the dual. Okay, if z is the zeros of the code, minus z modulo n is going to be the zeros of the dual. So dual is also a cyclic code. You know how to find that. And there is also this check polynomial, which is h of x equals x bar m plus one by g of x and when the generator polynomial of the dual is simply the reversal of h, okay, so x bar degree of h, h of x and y. Okay, so all these things uh, we saw uh, we saw before. Okay, so we're slowly going to make our way towards DCH codes, and that's the that's the point of this lecture. So, so before that, let me just point out one more result about the zeros of the code, and that will kind of uh, take us towards uh, I mean, take, uh, will complete the notion of cyclic codes for us. Okay. So, so here is a result, which is uh, interesting. Okay. So, so let's say you have, uh, so you have a cyclic code, a okay, binary cyclic code, C, which is generated by G of X. Okay, and G of X divides X bar n plus one. Okay, so G of X is a generator for C. Okay, so we saw that result, right? If I say it's uh, it's it's ideal generated to G of X and G of X divides X bar n plus one, it's in fact the generator polynomial of that cyclic code. It cannot have anything small. Okay. Uh, supposing we consider G of X a map of P of X. Suppose you may look at this ideal G of X P of X. Okay, set of all multiples of G of X P of X in R n. Okay, remember that's the idea here, right? So this is multiples of all multiples of g of x p of x where in R n. Okay, so we take all the elements of R n and multiply by g of x p of x. Do modulo x bar n plus one. See what you get. Okay, so this is my uh, then the so this is my ideal. Okay, so so I'm going to ask the question. When is this equal to g of x? Okay, that's my question. Okay, so I'm going to say I'm going to take g of x and then multiply it with some other polynomial p of x. Okay, so I'll so that I get an element of R n. Okay, I'll keep my degree suitable, and then I look at the ideal generated by that g of x into p of x. And now I want to ask the question: When is that ideal equal to the ideal generated by g of x itself? Okay, so this kind of puts a, uh, I mean, the point of this is in your cyclic code there might be other code words, right? So this is actually this is a code word that belongs to C, right? 
So it might also generate the same code, but it may not be the generator polynomial. It may be some other polynomial, but it may generate the same code, and you might be interested in that for whatever reason. Okay. So I want to find out: is there any PFX that I can find which will generate the same code? Okay. So uh, well, you don't quite need that. So so basically, what you need is PFX should not have any zeros other than those of GFX. That is the criteria that you need. Okay. So this this happens. The result is that this is true if if P of X has no zeros other than both of. Of course, when I say zeros, this is an F two param. Okay. Other than both of G of X. It might have other zeros elsewhere in some other field. I don't care. Okay, I have no problems. But in F2 parent, it should not have any zero other than those in G of X. Okay. So, for instance, one very nice application of this is okay. So, one example is if you look at this guy, G of X squared. Okay. What will it be equal to? It will be equal to G of X. Okay. So, this is a nice application of uh, a result like this. Okay. So if you don't have any new zeros in F2 param being added by PFX, then then this is uh, this will generate the same thing. So the proof is not too bad. It will involve the check polynomial. Okay. So what does it mean when I say PFX does not introduce any new zeros other than those of GFX? So it means the following. Okay, GCD of PFX comma HFX will be equal to what? Should be equal to one. Okay, should not have any common factors with HFX. Okay, it can have any number of common factors with GFX. I don't care. Right? Remember, x bar n plus one equals GFX times HFX. Okay, so the elements of F two bar n, okay, the elements of F two bar n, right, will either be roots of GFX or roots of HFX. Of course, this is a zero element, but the zero we will never consider. Okay, so that's that's not uh, something that we worry about. Okay. So zero zero will not affect us in any way. So you can have x here in a, any power of x multiplying it doesn't matter. Only the non-zero elements matter. Okay. So when I say zeros, of course I mean non-zero elements. Okay. So x power n plus one, the non-zero elements of f two power n, the 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 nth roots of unity in f two power n. This this is what I'm worried about. The nth roots of unity in f two power n will either be roots of g of x or be roots of h of x. Okay. So I should be careful here when I say in in f two power n. Basically, what I really want is the nth roots of unity in F2 para. Okay, so let me let me rephrase that here. Okay. No zeros among the nth roots of unity. Okay, so that's a probably a more precise statement. Okay, instead of saying in F2 para, F2 para might have other elements other than the nth roots of unity. You can have zeros there. I have no problem with that. Okay, among the nth roots of unity, you should not have any any zeros in P of X. Okay, so so the nth roots of unity will either be roots of G of X or of H of X. Okay, so I don't mind if P of X has factors in common with G of X, but it should not have any factor with H of X. Okay, so only if it has any factor in H of X, then it will be adding additional zeros. I don't want to do that. Okay, so this is the same 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 condition as this P of X having no additional zeros. Okay, so when you have G C D being one, there is this result. Okay, so which says, which says, the place where it puts a of x, b of x, such that, but when you have GCD being one, such that a of x times b of x plus b of x times h of x equals one. Okay, and this is only like uh, two x. Okay, so without any modulo or anything. Okay, so this is GCD, so that has to be equal to one. Okay, now what do I do? Can I do now? Any ideas? I want to be able to show that the ideal generated by G of X P of X is the same as the ideal generated by G of X. What is the only way to show that? Or what is one of the ways to show that? You have to show that there is a multiple of G of X P of X modulo X bar n plus one, which will give me G of X, not multiple. It should give me exactly G of X. Right, some multiple of G of X P of X should exactly give me G of X. Once I show that, I'm done. Okay, once I show G of X is in the ideal, I'm done. 
right? Because anyway, GFX, PFX will be contained in this guy. I only have to show the other containment. To show the other containment, it's enough if I show there is a multiple of GFX, PFX, which is equal to PF, GFX. Is that okay? If the two containments clear, remember, I want to show this set is equal to this set. The LHS is contained in the RHS. That is very obvious. Okay, I don't have to worry about that. Only thing I have to show is that the RHS is contained in the LHS. Right? How do I show that? I am going to show that by showing that GFX is contained in the LHS. If I show GFX is contained in the LHS, clearly all the multiples of GFX are also contained in the LHS and that means RHS is also contained in the LHS. Okay, so that is the idea. So how do we show now that GFX is contained in the LHS? What can I do with this equation? Multiply by GFX seems like a inspired idea. So, what will happen if I multiply the GFX? I get AFX times PFX plus BFX times, what is GFX times HFX? X bar n plus 1 and that equals GFX. So now, what can I do? Oh, yeah, I am sorry. That also happens. Yes. So, you have AFX times GFX, PFX. So, now what can I do? I can reduce mod X bar n plus 1 and that will kill this. So, that gives me what I want. Okay. So, that implies AFX times GFX times PFX equals GFX in what? In R. Okay. And that, that, that concludes the Okay. So, 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 this kind of answers the question that I was initially asking. What are the elements of the cyclic code will generate? The code itself. Okay, so let's do, let's take an example here and then see what happens. Okay, so remember zeros of the cyclic code will occur as union substitute on the process. You cannot have anything else uh, showing up. So let's take n equals 15 just for this way ease, ease of uh, ease of working with. So you'll have six several cyclic process. Okay, so I think the cyclic process process there should be quite easy. One, two, four, eight. 9, 12, 5, 10, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, Okay, we can can do that. That's what that defines the cyclic code. Okay, now what will be GFX for the cyclic code? Yeah, so I need the minimal polynomial of the primitive element in GF sixteen. It's, it's, it's easy to take up the x plus four plus x plus one. Okay, so it's a very standard thing. And then what about five? X squared plus x. So it's not too bad. So this is my GFX. Okay. So now if I ask you what other GFX will what are the polynomial in the cyclic code will generate the whole code? Okay. So it's not too bad to answer. So you have to figure out what HFX is. What is HFX? X plus one times X cube plus one and one X power four plus X power three plus X square plus X plus one. Okay. Those are all the guys out there. So if you take any P of X which is which does not have any of these factors. So remember I can take so degree of degree here is six. So my degree of uh, P of X can be as large as can go to eight, right? So I can take any polynomial of degree eight which is not does not have any common factors with this. So it should not have X plus one as a factor. What does it mean? If X plus one should not be a factor, a very simple rule is that you should not have an even number of terms. You should have an odd number of terms. K okay, when x plus one will not be a factor. X power four plus x cube plus one. You have to avoid this. Or this also you have to avoid. These things are more difficult. I mean, you have to divide and check it. But once, so there should be enough. There should be several of these guys which give you that. Okay. So, so that way you can quickly find the GFX. So, for example, C is the same as GFX times. I mean, you can take. Uh, what shall we do? So say x bar 3 plus x plus 1. Okay, take some crazy looking for a number like this. 
right. So, you know there is no root for x bar 3 plus x plus 1 in g of 16 right. So, it cannot happen. So, you take a sufficient uh, polynomial like that it will work ok. Simply take any irreducible polynomial of any degree which is not here you will always get something which is okay. So, you can take any irreducible polynomial of degree 5, irreducible polynomial of degree 6 you keep taking such polynomials and you know it will never, never take any of these guys. So, it will ok. So, that is uh, that is the kind of example of that ok. All right. So, the other thing which is uh, interesting is the dual code ok. So, what will be the dual code here? The dual code will be generated by what ok. So, so remember what I am doing. So, I, I have this and this in my zeros ok. So, my h will have the remaining things and then when I do h of x inverse the roots will get inverted again. So, to invert this guy what will I get? I will get the same thing though it is 1 ok 1 inverted 1 inverse is 1 ok well, what will happen when I invert this guy? 3, 6, 9, 12 remains the same ok what will happen when I invert this guy? I will go back to this ok. So, c power will actually be generated by x plus 1 times x power 4 plus x plus 1 times x power 4 plus x power 3 plus x power plus x plus 1. So, let me ask you a devious little question here. Okay. So, I want you to construct okay. I want you to construct a C with zeros such that C power is contained in C. Is that okay? Those are the stratomic process. Okay. I want to have the dual of C to be contained within C. Okay. So, when will one cyclic code be contained in another cyclic code? Okay. Yeah, which one has to divide the other? If C power has to be contained in C, the G of X of C has to divide the G of X of C power. So, is that okay? The generator polynomial of C should divide the generator polynomial of C power. Okay, only then it will be. So, so containment for cyclic codes is very easy to answer. Okay. So, uh, linear block codes and all it might be more difficult to look at all kinds of uh, course in elimination. Here it is very simple you just divide one generator polynomial by the other you know whether this is working out or not. So, how, how can I make the generator polynomial of C path divide the generator polynomial of C? For this one, yeah, for this one. Yeah, so that is the first thing you have to figure out. So, what happens when you do the inverse? Which cyclotomic process map to which cyclotomic process? You can show that when you invert one cyclotomic process will go to another cyclotomic process. It is not too difficult to show. So, this guy remains here, this guy remains here, and this guy also remains here when you invert. And what happens to this? This goes here, that goes there, ok. So, what should you do? This these looping things, no things that do not change about conversion, you have to include them as zeros, ok. Because if you do not, what will happen? They will end up going to the dual code and you cannot have g of x dividing. Is that ok? So, you have to retain all those guys in C, ok. So, that you will not get any, any anything else, and then you should take one among the other two things. Is that ok? Okay, so, if I take zeros to be, so for instance, if I take 0 union 3, 6, 9, 12, uh, am I right? I want C part to be contained in C. Yeah, let, let me try this, maybe the other way it will work. Let us see. 5, 10. Okay, none of these guys should go outside, right? In G of X, yeah. In other words, oh no, I, should, I should not pick any of these. Huh? I mean, then, uh, I should pick all of them, ok. And then maybe I pick 1, 2, 4, 8, ok. So, if I do this, yeah, now this will work, ok. So, g of x becomes a very big pol polynomial, ok. But I, I want, what do I want? I want, is this right? For c or c power? C, huh? Then what will be the G of X for C top? 1, 2, 4, 8. Okay, and then what will divide what? The generator polynomial of 
C power will divide the generator polynomial of C. Is that what I wanted? No, no, no. I wanted the other way now. See, that's what I said. There is some confusion here. The code C power has to be contained in the code C. Which means the zeros of C should be contained in the zeros of C power. Yeah, so this should be, this should go for C power. Okay, so this should be the zeros of C power. And then I would get the other way. Okay. So there are, there are ways to deal with containment and orthogonality and all these things you can play around with based on the zeros. It's not too hard. I mean, once you understand the way the zeros work, you can partition into two and well, how the inclusion works can be easy. So, okay. So you have to take these as the zeros of C per and then you will have uh, what you want. Okay. It's not too hard. Alright. So, so that's uh, that's the last comment I wanted to make about zeros. So, okay, all right. So the, the next thing we're going to do is the BCH bound, and that is really what's uh, what's quite important. Okay. If you have a binary cyclic code with some data polynomial G of x, okay, remember G of x divides x bar n plus one. Let's say alpha is permitted. and group of unity in some high enough okay it's a primitive nth root of unity okay basically the bcs point says if g of alpha bar b equals g of alpha bar b plus 1 so um, equals g of alpha plus b plus delta minus 2 equals 0 then B min of C is greater than or equal to okay. okay. So this is called the BCH bound. Okay. So what this says is if you have delta minus 1 consecutive powers of alpha as zeros of your code, then your minimum distance is greater than or equal to delta. Okay. So this is what uh, it means. And if you go back to the way I defined the BCH code, I would have done exactly the same thing that I would have done it as the, in the form of a parity check matrix. Okay, so I have done the exact same thing, but usually this is how people state. So what is B? B is some integer. Okay, be positive. If you take B to be 0, you get what is known as narrow sense codes, narrow sense case. Okay, the narrow sense case is when you take B equal to 0. Okay, okay so the proof is actually very similar to what we did before. You go back to the random one matrix. And we'll say with the sub matrix has to have full rank and it's exact same argument, nothing changes in the in the proof. Uh, except that I want to just bring out one one uh, interesting little detail in the proof if you wanted to if you wanted to look at it. Okay, so 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 so, so we have this random one matrix, right? So that is from the major part of the proof. What is the structure of the random one matrix? You have the Had one, one all along the top, or one along here, right? Here, huh? no. I think the way I wrote down the random one matrix was a bit more general, right? I said what? I said a zero top, a zero, and then a zero squared, all the way to some a zero bar r. So did I write it like this? Okay, so, so maybe I'll use a one. Then A2, A2 squared, A2 bar R, and then I said AR, AR squared, AR bar R. Okay. So if all these guys are not equal to each other, and then and then we looked at the determinant and we said it has to be non-zero. So this will have full run. Okay. So this is what is what we basically use. And uh, so in this case, when you look at these guys, okay, so you will have an easier situation. Okay. So the reason is all of these things are nth roots of unity. Okay, so if you raise them to the power n, they are going to go to 0. Right? So, so, so you can use that if you like and find explicitly some inverse of these things and all that. So you can do all these nice things. You can write down the full, uh, full, full matrix and find the inverse explicitly. You know. So you can do a little bit of an easier job there, but 
But anyway, in essence, it goes back to this idea. Okay, a matrix like this, if A is not equal to AJ as uh, determinant, not equal to Q. Okay, and that's uh, that's the basic result that we use here, and you can prove this. Okay. So, so from here we define BCH codes. Okay, I'll define the binary BCH code. So basically, we pick some B to be some integer, and you pick delta, which is a defined distance, zero across two integer. Okay, and you simply let C to be generated by three of X. That g of x is the least degree uh, divisor of x bar n plus 1 that has alpha bar b, alpha bar b plus 1, so until alpha bar b plus delta minus 1 is. So that's basically the definition of BCH code. I know the BCH bound works. If I have delta minus one consecutive zeros, I will have a minimum distance of delta. So I will pick the smallest degree g of x. Why am I, why am I interested in picking the smallest degree g of x? That, that gives you the largest number of code words. Okay, why am I interested in least degree? Because the dimension is n minus the degree, and I want to maximize the number of code words I have. So, so I pick the least degree divisor of x bar n plus 1 that has all these things as rules. So how do you do that? That's basically from regular theory that we saw that implies g of x is going to be the LCM of, of what? The minimal polynomials of all these things. So let me solve it. So that's the uh, that's the basic idea. If you approach it from the cyclic point of view, or you already know what g of x is, and then you control the degree. Okay. So, but the way I did it in class, I would write down the parity check matrix, and then argue how alpha to alpha to delta minus one are all roots of every single code word. Which means each of these guys have to divide each of the code words. Which means the LCM of all those guys has to divide. And then I also went the other way. So, if if you have a code word which is a multiple of the LCM of all these things. It satisfies the parity check. So this is if and only if. So we call this as the generator polynomial. Okay, but you can start with cyclic codes more generally, then talk about why generator polynomials have to exist, and then come back anyway to the BCH bound, because that is what really gives you the minimum distance. Nothing in the cyclic code theory will give you a minimum distance, only the BCH bound gives you the minimum distance. Okay. Come back to the BCH bounds and argue that the zeros have to be there. Okay. And then you claim that this has to work. Okay. But the only thing here is uh, the block length n has to be chosen carefully and this alpha has to be an n-fruit of unity and all that. Okay? But in the way we did it in the, the parity check matrix, I simply said the order of alpha has to be greater than n. I never said equal to n. Okay? So I won't get the cyclic constraint. Okay? So how do you go from here to those kind of things? You have to shorten the code. Okay? So the last few bits you basically insert zeros, you can always go to n. That also I discussed for a moment. Okay? So I said, uh, so that's the only additional confusion there. That's okay. That can be dealt with very easy. Okay. So that's the that's the BCH code approach from the cyclic code point of view. And of course, if you do the binary case, okay, in the binary case, many things are simple. Okay, in the binary case, uh, you notice that the binary uh, case with narrow sums. Okay. For uh, design distance delta, okay, usually you pick delta to be 2t plus 1. Okay, so that t becomes your design error correcting capability. Okay, so if you do that, then g of x is going to be LCM of m alpha. Okay, and then I don't have to do alpha squared. The reason is I know alpha squared is anyway the same minimal polynomial as alpha. Okay, because I'm doing binary, right? So alpha plus three x all the way to what is the last one? Two t 
So only the last things are important, right? So I'll put two t minus one. Okay. So that will give me the. Uh, sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, it should be two, two, no? Yeah, you're right. I need delta minus one consecutive bits. Is it okay? Yeah, sorry for that. Okay. So, so narrow sense, you you pick b to be one, okay, and then you get uh, one to delta minus. Is that right? So, so, so this is how you this is how you go about picking it. You can write down the BCH codes like we did before. We have done this several times already. So. You, Okay, so so the nice thing about approaching it from the cyclic codes point of view is you can deal with uh, cyclic. I mean, so for instance, BCH codes of length n equals twenty one, okay, which are cyclic. You can do that very nicely if you approach it from the cyclic codes point. Of view. So if you don't do the if you do just the parity check matrix. It's a bit confusing as to why is it cyclic and all that. You may not see that immediately. But this is a nice, uh, nice, nice way. Okay. So, so of course we also had the uh, the result about the uh, degree of GFX, right? So degree of GFX. Okay. This is going to be how many of them are here? Uh, T of them. Okay. So it's going to be less than or equal to T times M. Okay. So if you say alpha belongs to T of two power M. Okay, because there are t such polynomials, each of them has a maximum degree of m, degree is less than or equal to m. That implies k is greater than or equal to m minus m. Okay, so this is true in the BCH case. Okay, so 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 that's the that's like I said the way you would approach uh, the BCH code, and then uh, if you want to go towards the reed solomon codes. Okay, the approach is a little bit. Uh, so, so let me talk about non-binary cyclic codes. Okay, so maybe uh, maybe I'll think about that then. Uh, so we have to do one more lecture tomorrow also. Right? So, so we can look at the non-binary uh, cyclic code things. So I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I should mention about uh, BCH codes. Yeah. So, so, so again, you should remember that the DMN is greater than or equal to delta. Okay, most cases will be equal. It can be greater also. So lots of other results, simple results of this kind. Okay, so that's BCH codes. Uh, the next idea is uh, to go towards non-binary cyclic codes. Okay, so so that, so this is the approach towards RS codes. The idea for is we are going to go towards RS codes. So if you remember the way I did it in class, I gave you a parity check matrix and I said if you restrict to binary code words, you get BCH codes. If you say codes over the field in which the alpha is, then you get reed solomon codes. Okay. So you can also do this non-binary cyclic codes idea and come towards the reed solomon codes. So let me try to try and do that for you. Okay. So so once again we start with an Rn. Okay. But except that I will define an Rn to have A more general set of elements. So a zero plus a one x plus a n minus one x bar n minus one, and these a's will come from an arbitrary field G of Q. Okay. Not necessarily from G of Q. I was saying binary. I can say arbitrary field. Okay. Now, if you notice the same uh, property that we had, if you have an a of x and r n. What will be x times o of x? Okay, again, addition and multiplication will be modulo. Instead of x bar n plus one now, I'll say minus one. Just to be careful, q could be odd, right? In which case, minus one is not the same as plus one. So I'll say x bar n minus one. Then what happens if I do x times o of x? The same cyclic shift will hold. Okay, so if o of x is a zero, a one, a n minus one. If I do x times o of x. It becomes a zero x plus a one x squared. So until a n minus one, x bar n, x bar n is the same as 
1. Okay, because I am going mod over x bar and minus 1. So, x bar over f x becomes the same as a n minus 1, a 0, a 1, and a n minus 2. Okay. So, once again, clearly, ideals of R n will be cyclic codes over G f. Okay. So, that result again proves. Codes over G of Q. Okay, so just to keep the notation a little bit, there's one jargon here. Instead of saying cyclic codes over G of Q, it's also very common to say Q very cyclic codes. Okay, when Q is two, you say binary cyclic codes. Otherwise, you simply say Q very cyclic codes. Okay, so that's the first step. Okay, so the first step seems smooth. There's no problem. What was our next step in the cyclic codes idea? We were trying to characterize ideals of G of, of this Rn, right? And if you go and look at the proof, the only thing we used is division property. Okay, and the division property over works over any field. I don't have to necessarily say uh, anything anything particular about it. Okay, so you can once again once again show all ideals of Rn are principal. Okay, and you can show the pal so every ideal has a unique monic polynomial of minimum degree. What do you mean by monic now? Okay, when I say a polynomial is monic, its highest degree coefficient is 1, is unit. Okay, so that is the definition of monic. Okay, you can see, see why I need monic. Okay. If I have a polynomial of least degree and my field has more than two elements, if I multiply it by any other non-zero element, I will get another polynomial of least degree. So clearly if I do not say monic, the polynomial of least degree is not unique, but the non-uniqueness is very silly. It is only up to a multiplication by a constant. So how do I force the uniqueness? I say monic. Okay, if I say monic, I cannot have two different monic polynomials of least degree. Okay, the reason is, if I subtract that, then the first row will cancel. Okay, I have to subtract, I cannot add, I won't add an arbitrary field. Now, the subtract, the first guy will cancel, I will get a strictly lower degree. So, monic guy will become unique. Okay, And then, you have to argue now that this guy has to divide x bar n minus 1. Okay, so, that is the next step and you can do that also. Okay. So, this unique monic polynomial, it is called the generator polynomial. Okay. So, generator polynomial divides x bar n minus 1. Okay, so, that is the first result. It is not too too hard to uh, argue that result. Okay. Divides x bar n minus 1. Okay. All right. And what else can we say? The similar result that we had uh, before. Okay. So, so the ideal is equal to multiples of g of x with degree plus 1 or equal to n minus 1. Okay. And multiples over, okay, so I should be careful here when I say multiples here, what do I mean by that? So, this multiples when I say here, this is over S Q X. Okay. So, so of course, I showed that the, so it is easy to show that the generator polynomial will generate the entire ideal in R n. You take all the elements of R n, multiply with G of X, do modulo X power n minus 1, you will get the entire ideal. But even more is true, like you proved before. Since G of X divides X power n minus 1, you can show that if you take those multiples of G of X, which have degree only less than or equal to n minus 1, right, degree is only less than or equal to n minus 1 and you do the multiplication only in SQX, you do not do any modulo x power n minus 1, you still get all the elements of the, of the idea. Okay, so that clearly tells you that the dimension, right, dimension is equal to n minus degree of g of x. Okay, so that all these properties once again can be shown, you can go back and check the way I proved it, 
then try to do the modification, remember we'll do x bar and minus 1, then use the division algorithm carefully again and again, we will get all these things, it's not, not very hard to do this, okay. The part which will become tricky is, what, what is the next step, how did we proceed after this once you figured out all these things, we wanted to factor x bar n plus 1, right, we are so used to factoring x bar n plus 1, so here now we have to factor x bar n minus 1, but then where should the coefficients come from, f q, so that complicates matters a little bit. Okay. So, you have to do cyclotomic cosets modulo n but under multiplication by q. Okay. So, there I think the, uh, there will be some confusion if you do not do it carefully. Okay. You, can, you cannot directly go to cyclotomic cosets. First of all, you should find the primitive nth root of unity in sqm, q power n. Okay. So, that is the first step. Okay. So, we factoring x power n minus 1 over g of q is a little bit more complicated, okay, so it is not quite a bit, com not much more complicated, little bit more complicated. First thing is, you should restrict yourself to a case where x bar n minus 1 has linear factors, okay, so that simplifies the factoring a lot. If you, if you have not, if you, if you have repeated factors or some crazy kind of factoring, then you will get into trouble, okay, so it will definitely have you know, linear factors over a large enough field, okay, so for that what you do is, you pick n comma q, gcd of n comma q to be 1, okay. So, if you do that, it guarantees that there exists alpha in g of q power n such that order of alpha is equal to, okay. So, if you do that, you can guarantee this. The reason is, if you have GCD of n and q being equal to 1, okay, for a large enough n, q power n minus 1, n will divide q power n minus 1. Same result as before. So we put for when q is two, we always pick n to be odd. The actual reason is because then the GCD or n comma two will be one, and I know that for a large enough m, the odd number will divide two power m minus one. The same result will generalize. You pick GCD of n comma q to be one, and then for a large enough m, n will divide q power m minus one. And in that g of q power m, you will have an element of order n. Okay. That's easy to do. So once you have this, factoring is easy. So much easier, let me say. Okay, so so usually people stick to this. Okay, you don't allow repeated factors and all kinds of complications in experiment minus one. You just stick to this. And then what you can do is you can find cyclotomic process modulo n under multiplication by what? By q. You okay, have to multiply by q. Okay. And once again, the same kind of results will go. Okay, so there's no problem. So, so you take the you take alpha and raise it to repeatedly to powers of q, and then combine all the linear factors that occur in that cyclotomic process. You multiply it together, you will get the polynomial with coefficients from g of q and not q power m. Okay, the same same uh, results like we had before will go through. Okay, so it's a bit more difficult. I, I never proved this in great detail in class. So believe me, this will happen. Okay, so it's not too hard to not too hard, not too hard to prove this. Okay, so let's try an example just for fun. Okay, only little time, so I'll stop. I'll continue with this in next class. So for example, if I pick, uh, let's say, what can we pick? Okay, so we pick uh, uh, a very simple case. So let me pick n equals 15. Okay, I'll take 2 to be 16. Okay, so this is a very simple case. Okay, so it's not too hard. Okay, Q is 16. So my GF value field I'm looking at over. I want a cyclic code over GF 16. Okay, so an n comma q, this condition is satisfied. What is the smallest n such that there will be an element of order n in g of q power m? 1 itself, right? So, so you know alpha, you can take it to be g 16 from the 2 element. Okay, then order of alpha will be equal to 15. Okay, so it, this is a very easy factorization. Okay, so you know what what will happen, right? So x bar n minus one. In fact, it's the same as x bar n plus one here. Because characteristic is two, even though I said q is sixteen. This actually is the product of x minus alpha bar i i going from zero to fourteen. Okay, you know that this is true. Okay, but what am I talking about? All the cyclotomic cosets. Let's try to do cyclotomic cosets modulo fifteen and the multiplication by sixteen. What happens? 0 will be a cyclotomic process and then suppose, suppose I start with 1, what happens? 1, just 1, what happens if I do 2? 
2 times 16 is what? 32, but modulus 15 is again 2. Okay, so we'll see every cyclotomic coset will have just one element and there will be 15 of them. Okay, now that's not very surprising because each of these polynomials is actually a polynomial with coefficients from GF16. It's no big deal. Okay, so you really you know what you're going to get. Okay, but if you take a slightly more complicated example, okay, let's say let's say I pick n equals uh, what shall we do? Let's say we pick n equals uh, hmm, be careful here. So let me pick q equals uh, nine. Okay, so let's do here uh, nine. Okay, so it's not an extension field, but just nine, and uh, I should pick n to be something that will have. Uh, hmm? You have to be careful when you pick here, right? So you have to go powers of nine. Okay, so nine. I could pick n equals eight, and then become very easy. So let me pick n equals ten, so just to make it a little bit more interesting. Okay, so if you look at that, then you'll see that uh, the primitive element, right? Primitive tenth root of unity in an extension field of nine will be m equals two. Okay, so c q squared minus nine squared minus one is eighty, and ten divides eighty. Okay, so in G F eighty one, okay, you will have a primitive tenth root of unity. Okay, but all that you don't have to know if you use the cyclotomic coset idea. As long as I know ten and nine are relatively prime, you can use the cyclotomic coset idea and smoothly get away with it. So you'll have zero, right? And then you'll have one, nine. That's it, right? Remember why? Is that correct? Okay, so remember I have to do modulo 10 multiplication by 9. So 9 times 9 is 81, and that goes back to 1. Okay, then 2, 8, 8. That's it. Okay, you go back to 2. Okay, and then 3, 3 times 9 is 27, modulo 10 is 7. And that should be it. Okay, so you cannot have more than two. Okay, so we'll see that that will work out. And what about four? Four, six, and five will be by itself. Okay. So this other cyclotomic coset. So you know that x power ten minus one factors into factors in this way. Okay, so factors of x minus one is easy to write. And then you will have four different polynomials. Of degree two with coefficients from S9. Okay, S9 is from zero to eight modulo nine. Okay, so we'll have coefficients like that. We'll have four of them, and then finally we'll have one more guy. What will be that? Let me see. Huh? Yeah, do x plus one. Right? So because x bar ten, ten is even. No, so we'll have x bar minus one. So x minus one into x plus one. If you want, you can write x plus one as x minus eight. Okay, so that will also be fine. Okay, and then you will also have some additional polynomials here. I am not writing it down. I do not know what they are. Okay, if you want, you can simplify. It is not very hard to do that. I mean, after all, well, q is 9, no? So, that will be 1, comma 9. So, you need a primitive element, right? So, you have to find a primitive element. In most cases, 2 will be a primitive element. I think 2 is a primitive element here. 2 power 8 is. What? I think it is. Uh, is it okay? Is 2 a primitive element in GF9? Okay, so you find a primitive element and raise it to the powers here, it is very easy to multiply, you just doing modulo. Okay, so you will get all the other polynomials also. So you can factor like this and then you will take devices from this fact. Okay, so we will proceed from here tomorrow.